bring the truth. We are here on Ahlul Bay TV, Sky 745, and I'm your host for tonight, Fahima Muhammad. I'd like to welcome you all, dear viewers, who are watching from all the different social media platforms. I just want to remind the dear viewers, this is a live call-in show. Please do call in with any comments or questions for the subject of today, as well as speaking to our guests tonight, who I'm going to introduce. But before I do, I just want to remind you also that this is a new platform for invitation for non-Muslims, new Muslims, and existing Muslims, inshallah, to join our platforms on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where we will be collaborating with further education and learning and discovering about the truth and Islam in as a whole. I would love tonight to introduce you to my guests. We have all the way from Massachusetts, Massachusetts uh, USA, Estella Rodriguez Jibril. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very honored and excited to be here. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. And we have our guest scholar as well for tonight. We have Sayyid Abbas Abidi. Salamu alaikum, Sayyid. Alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so Thank much you. for both of you uh, for joining me, especially um, Estella, all the way from Massachusetts. This is amazing. You're all the way there, and it's in the afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, before I go into the Sayyid, we are discussing different topics regarding around the experiences, the challenges, and what new Muslims are facing today. I know you've been um, in the journey of Islam for many years now, but you have the experience and also the background and you know colleagues and friends, and also you do have your own platform professionally where you coach and you help individuals overcome their challenges. I wanna start with you with regards to the family issues that new Muslims experience today. I know that is the best place is to start by addressing some of the actual issues and then we can go into the conversation a lot deeper. What is your thoughts on the main points that we need to raise tonight so that we can bring better understanding and hopefully some solutions? The most important point to really pay attention to is um, that, that transition point, right? That transition point. Life completely changes for an individual when you um, embrace Islam, when you get guided to this beautiful faith. Um, it, and, you know, years ago when I embraced Islam, the dynamics around the world were a bit different. And nowadays it's, you know, there's a lot of negativity, unfortunately, out there that we're still, you know, working through. Uh, as a world, right? Understanding the truth about Islam. And what's really important is to provide support because a lot of families, when, you know, their children or their uh, family members embrace Islam, they have a fear. You know, they are afraid for their loved one and it's simply because they don't understand, right? They don't understand. And that is um, a very normal thing for you know, an outsider to experience, you know, my daughter has become Muslim. You know, what you know, what have I done wrong? You know, what mm -hmm. what is it that I need to do to help them and protect them? So it's important to recognize that the dynamics are going to change so much for this new individual. And at the same time, that individual has been on a journey. That individual has seeked out guidance. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guides those that seek guidance. I know for myself, I started my journey of really wanting to be guided to the truth at a very young age, 16. And I didn't come across Islam until I was 24. And as human beings, we know that we have this innate desire to find the truth. And the family issues that come up for new Muslims is that fear that a loved one has for their family member simply because they don't understand. And it's so important to be able to talk about this so that there isn't this, you know, additional trauma 
that is passed on or that it's taken on by the new Muslim. It, it, there needs to be some preparation. And I know there are courses all over the world in diverse messages, you know, introductory to, mm -hmm. right? Introductory to the faith. And a big component needs to be that, that mental aspect, that mental aspect so that there's resiliency, so that there is, you know, more ease in the transformation. That is amazing. You've highlighted so much at the beginning and a really good introduction. And I think what you've said to begin with, even though there's so much more, the most important um, sort of, I would say, experience and issue, which is a challenge, is um, not just for the individual coming into Islam, but trying to also bring that safety and security for their loved ones, their family members, who may not have the same understanding, who may not have the same insights and learning. So this is a really interesting viewpoint and angle, which I think a lot of Muslims ourselves existing don't even consider. I want to come to you, Sayyid. Um, that's a really important point because what we're trying to establish here at Sincere Community Services is providing that support, not just for new Muslims, but for non-Muslims to learn, to integrate, to actually feel that there's a need of understanding better by having this kind of information, even if they don't follow it. But if a family member was to actually follow and find some sort of truth and discovery, that we are providing a platform that's open to to all backgrounds, faith of no faith. And I think it's really important because we haven't really seen anything like that, you know, um, recently to have that kind of transition. How important it is, is it to you, Sayyid, to create the space for this information, for people to discover our, you know, faith? Uh, thank you so much for your question. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure uh to be with you and uh, we are all here to discuss on the certain issues like in the family issues for the new muslims uh as scs as you know that this platform is the new platform uh, just formed only for the new muslims as well as the the even non-muslims those who are looking for the truth but they don't find any proper a uh, way to reach to the truth uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we have shown our signs uh, in within themselves in the galaxies and that uh, signs drives us towards uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of all so uh, our aim is to connect the human beings to their Lord, to their Creator. Unfortunately, those who don't recognize their Creator, they are actually lost themselves. They have some sort of materialistic enjoyment, but that is for few days, and that is not for uh, forever. So they uh, live like animals. Like animals, they go for the food, they struggle to get some sort of um, rest and then go back to uh, full their fill their stomachs if the the people the mankind thinking just like uh, the animals are thinking it means that they are they have they themselves they lost their way we should show the right direction and right right path to all the human beings and that that right path is to uh, recognize by themselves through logic as islam claims that islam is not something uh, which can be applied forcefully you have to go through intellect through your nature through your reason if you got proper logical reasons then you believe it otherwise you don't need to believe so those who got some sort of intellectual uh, skills those who want to know the reason they should come and understand the existence of god and then try to fulfill their responsibilities uh, by obeying allah subhanahu ta'ala and following the commandments of the creator and that is the way 
So for coming out of the family issues, as uh, Sister uh, Jibril told that, yes, the transition period is so crucial for those who want to become Muslim. So coming from a different background, different society, different environment to Islam is really a challenging time. And if they want to convert themselves into Islam, they should lose many things. But remember a beautiful uh, supplication coming from our beloved third Imam, the divine Imam, Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. He says um, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, the one who have found you, what has to lose? He has nothing to lose. The one who found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, he has nothing to lose. So he should not be worried of losing any materialistic thing or any um, worldly joyfulness. And then furthermore, he says that, oh Allah, the one who lost you, what has found for himself? Nothing. So if you just compare that if you found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you found the path, then you have everything because God is the creator of everything, all power, all mercy, all uh, things which you need can be provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have everything. And if you lost him, lost him, and you don't have connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually, just like you are in a darkness, you are in a jungle, and nobody is with you, and you lost even the connection of your mobile. Just imagine what happened to you. If you don't have anyone, you don't know the way, and the, the, the environment is full of darkness, and then you had some connection through the mobile, and you lost the connection as well. So what happened to you? You have no way. You are totally confused. You feel you are helpless here and you you have no meaning to, to survive that. So similar to that, if you just lose the connection to your Lord, you are just like a person who has lost connection in the jungle being alone. So if someone got the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tried to connect with his Lord or with her Lord, uh, they are in the safe way. They are having everything. That's why sometimes the uh, temporary issues coming through the family or from through the environment or any like losing job, losing the friendships, sometimes losing your um, uh, uh, kinships and your relatives uh, because of, you know, your new journey towards uh, Islam. So, but you have to uh, make yourself confident and try to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beautiful verse which always gives you hope is that Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا A very beautiful statement, a very beautiful enlightening verse of Holy Quran. Those who struggle in my way, it's my duty to show them my ways. So they are not uh, in dead end. They are not stuck anywhere. Allah will take them out of all problems. So we have to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, test in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find uh, always when you reach to some sort of dead end, you feel that Allah will provide you the way out for all uh, difficulties from all difficulties inshallah thank you that is a very interesting angle um i do find that um it is very enlightening to hear that people that are coming into islam can find the truth and discovery and they're already in it um it's just very difficult when you're living with family members and there are different ways of you know different faith and no faith that are still loving each other and wanting to integrate and collaborate there needs to be better solutions estella what would be your 
ideas that you would like to see in order for us to have the language, to have the terminology, to have even existing Muslims be inviting and open to collaborate so that new families, um, new Muslims with their, within their families can actually can actually feel some sort of safety and security um, knowing that they're entering into a religion that is open regardless if they are willing to come into it. Being able to recognize the learning curve is absolutely huge because you come into a new faith and you're absolutely green, you're absolutely brand new and a lot of the concepts that I know now, I had no idea even in the beginning. And it's so important because there are, you know, a lot of well-intentioned, you know, Muslims that have been in the faith, that were born into the faith, that have studied intensely or have reverted and have been reverts for a long time, that forget that learning curve that forget that learning curve. And one thing that is very important for new Muslims is to not apply more pressure than they already have. Because it, that pressure will break a person. And we hear stories of new reverts that leave the faith simply because they felt too much pressure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful more merciful than a mother is even to her newborn child. And a new Muslim coming into Islam, no matter how old they are, in the first few years, they're babies. Mm -hmm. They're infants. And many learned uh, Muslims, many Muslims born into the faith forget that. And I think yeah. it's important to really be conscientious of that and aware of that and recognize that that pressure can definitely break a person. Do you think that pressure is coming from existing Muslims and expectations uh, with regards to, for example, wearing hijab or expectations of, you know, uh, practicing certain rituals? Or do you think also there's pressure from um, their families who are not Muslim and they just have a concern and worry because of lack of understanding? And how do we build that bridge and gap? I think it's coming from both directions, from both directions. Um, and it's, and it's something that needs to be addressed from both directions, but specifically from the direction of those that are in the community, those that are part of the Ummah, they need to be aware of what, you know, their own prejudices are, their own judgments are, their own ability to criticize, you know, they have, you know, we have to consistently be reflecting and it's something that I myself have experienced. You know, I embraced Islam over 30 years ago. And the first 15 years of my faith, I didn't wear hijab except when I went to the masjid and when I prayed. And there wasn't a time that I didn't get looks, that I didn't get pushed away. I always experienced that when I go and I wasn't, I've never been a person that I need to impress someone. Mm -hmm. I'm myself. I am who I am. I enter the masjid, you know, when I wasn't covering, I cover and do my salah. I leave the masjid and I return to the attire, the modest attire that I would wear. And, and there is that judgment and there is that pressure. Sister, you have to do this. Sister, you have to do that. Brother, you have to do this. Instead of coming from a place of love and compassion and most important of all modeling our beloved prophet muhammad وسلم, was the best role model and unfortunately in this day and age many many muslims have forgotten how to be good role models I think you've raised such an interesting and important point, which is so crucial right now. Say it, I want to obviously go in, into it a little bit deeper. 
there is a responsibility as Muslims to give our um, sort of like they call da'wah, you know, lip service, let's talk, let's, you know, advise, you know, without judgment, without being critical. But again, it comes across, and especially for women, um, where the appearance is one thing that is always criticized and judged in a very harsh way. And especially to new Muslims, as much as the rules are there in Islam, Islam is about becoming. Even for existing Muslims, we are all on our own journey. But when there's pressure from existing Muslims to put this on uh, you know, new Muslims that it has to be, you know, now they've taken their shahada, this is the rules, this is the guidelines, and you've got to go into it at the deep end following exactly what the rule book says. And it's mainly to do with surface, uh, for example, attire like wearing hijab or you know, being in a particular way. How would we now change ourselves? to not be that judgmental and criticize, to actually, you know, do what Stella has mentioned, you know, to be more role models. And what's the balance between trying to inform another brother and sister in, a, in the correct way, as well as holding ourselves back so that we can actually have that space, hold that space for them to actually continue in that journey comfortably and not feel like they've come into it straight away and they have to put all this pressure on themselves to perform exactly and according to what you know the books and the guidelines say. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Sister Estribilla still have mentioned the uh, beautiful um, point about the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he is the perfect role model and he himself has declared many times on several occasions that li mal akhlaq. i have been chosen to complete the stages of the manners the ethics so the important point which unfortunately as sister said the muslim have lost that point is being uh, ethical being well-mannered and having the welcoming approach welcoming uh, attitude rather than instructing way of approach unfortunately the preachers the the um, organizers of the uh, mosque or organizers of the different institutions of the muslims they think that they are the godly people only and they should be followed by the new muslims and they are just like instructors like policemen while it is not the case the reality is as quran says beautifully quran says Lima taquluna ma la why you advise someone something which you don't follow the first important point is to apply the uh, ethical and manners upon ourselves and try to be gentle as much as we can as the holy prophet used to be and this is the way if you are not mannered enough you have no right to advise anyone else that is the clear um, words of Holy Quran and the traditions of the Prophet always emphasize on this, that we should be well-mannered, we should be uh, well-behaved for others. When someone coming into the Islam should feel proud to be the part of the Muslim Ummah, to be the part of the new community where she or he is going to join so they should feel uh, proud to be muslim and the other brothers and sisters those who are already in islam they should feel proud to be the proper host and showing their hospitality in the best manner so because of that even scs as you know sister fahima that we try our best to create a new community which has 100% kindfulness, 100% love and kindness towards new Muslims, even non-Muslims. Non-Muslims are not considered as denial people. As my research says that no one is 
kafir. When we say Quran always says kafir are going to hell, kafir are not having any mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be definitely going to hell and they deserve to be in hellfire, right? When we say kafir, kafir is not non-Muslim. Unfortunately, the bad and very bad school of thought coming uh, in the name of Islam from Wahhabism and the Salafism, what they teach is that they, they teach that every person who does not believe in the way as they believe, they name and brand them as kafir, right? And bring the all verses of Holy Quran about kafir, that kafir are uh, in hellfire, kafir are this and that, that. While this is not the case, kafir is the one who has received the truth with full evidence, with full proofs, with full reasonings, and then starts denying it. When you deny the truth after knowing it deliberately, then you is considered as kafir. In my point of view, the majority of non-Muslims are not denials, not kafirs. They are ignorant about Islam. We should teach them politely, with the full uh, manners, with respect, with honor, with dignity. We should uh, emphasize upon their um, existence that they are created by God and God loves them because God, uh, God loves his creator creation just like we love sometimes our car or sometimes our home. While we don't uh, create the car, we don't uh, build the house, we just uh, bought the house and claim that we are the owner of that house, our owner of the car and we start loving it. And we don't want to see any scratch on it. And if someone scratches it, we get angry. Why? Because we have some sort of attachment. While we are not the maker, we are not the creator, we are just owner for the time being. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just the, uh, the owner, he is the creator. He is the maker of all creation. So Allah yeah. loves every single creature, even creature. So why should we hate someone who is considered as the creation of God and God definitely loves his creation. So we should love and through love, we can go into their hearts and bring some divine knowledge in their hearts so that they recognize their Lord and come to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you. That's really important that you share that because I think a lot of us do get confused uh, trying to enforce the laws of Quran and Ahadith and guidance at the very beginning of any one stages and phases in life. And especially for a new Muslim, it's a lot of pressure to say to somebody, even if you were to give information, well, this is the rule, this is what you have to follow, and this is how it's meant to be. So we need to be very mindful how we do address things. Yeah. And it's very important that you did say as well that, you know, our faith is does not hate. And it's not because, you know, we are in the religion or in not in the religion, we should really respect people as humans and not label and judge and criticize. So these are really important points that we need to address so that they takes away the misconceptions and people that are entering into Islam and the families that are not following in the religion but have this awareness can be a little bit more at ease. Now, Estelle, I want to switch it up a little bit because we've talked about, you know, obviously, um, Coming, to, coming into the faith and having some sort of like, you know, pressure. But what about when it's family dynamics in itself? Now you've got, for example, okay, you might get a young Muslim coming into Islam, but there's always family around. And even if it's an older Muslim where they have children and they've, you know, maybe divorced or, you know, they've got cousins, they've got relatives and there's family meetings together, there's holidays as we know the season is here for that. How do we, um, you know, sort of like 
have this kind of understanding or platform within the existing Muslims to give the new Muslims another home, another place. Because sometimes I, I get a lot of people come to me that are reverts and saying that their family are not accepting, they're not willing, they're not even willing to cook separately, for example. Let's just be practical. So then how are they going to navigate so that they can have their faith and also respect their families because these are also sometimes their own parents, their own sisters, their own siblings um, that they have to face in the holidays, which are not that understanding and they're not adhering to it. So how do you sort of like see this as something that we can use as an example and to maybe navigate in our own homes as Muslims and even for new Muslims to even sort of create a space for them to actually uh, have some practical tips? It's definitely um, something that, you know, will really benefit so many by just talking about this because yeah, there's a lot to navigate within your own family. Um, I know that for me, you know, in the beginning, you know, the, the cooking aspect was, you know, a big challenge and, you know, Alhamdulillah, I actually got married um, relatively quickly in a positive way, not in a pressured way. So I was able to transition into my own home. And then that was, um, you know, so, you know, having said that, it kind of brings up that other conversation of, especially for women. And it, I would imagine it happens for brothers too, that they want to get married, you know, people in the community want to get them married off as quickly as possible, right? So, I mean, there is, we know that marriage is half of our religion. It is, it is important, but it is so important, like you said, to first learn how to navigate through your own family dynamics, through your own family dynamics, and then how to get connected with the community so that you can feel that support. And I think for, for our new Muslims coming into the faith, there is a level of accountability and a level of responsibility. Um, we can't expect people to cater to us. We can't expect, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be knowledgeable and, and, and create, you know, those boundaries for ourselves by modeling respect, by modeling, you know, respect is such an amazing um, emotion because it, re being respectful is an emotion, you know, um, and as you learn, you know, more of the importance of hadith, right, in, in our faith of following the mannerism of our prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as a community, recognize how important it is to make things available for new Muslims. Um, whether it is, it's your home, I know for years, you know, celebrating Eid, everyone talks about, you know, the generosity and, 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 and connecting with each other. But on the day of Eid, every families who see Muslims that are on their own kind of all of a sudden abandon them, unfortunately, you know. So there has to be something systemic, I think, set up where there are invested families in the community that create an open door policy, that create an open door policy, especially during the holidays, because Absolutely. Very Sorry to interrupt you there, Asala. I think we do have a caller online. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Oh, we must have lost them. If you do want to call again, please do hold if um, I don't get to you straight away. But um, inshallah, if you are listening, please do call again. I'll try and get your call in as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I was just... Uh, oh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sister, and salam to your guest as well. Now, I've got two questions, actually. Uh, one is to Stella, sister, and that my question is, what made you attractive to Islam? Why did you come to Islam? Question number one. How was it when you started your journey towards Islam? Uh, what was the reaction? And through whom did you really find that Step to get into Islam, and the second question is to Molana. Aga, you mentioned it very, very well regarding people calling somebody a kafir. But my question is here that we have we Muslims 
called so-called Muslim, I think we have got a responsibility as well. How did we go and talk to somebody in a best manner to get him to show uh, from darkness to light or whatever the way we prefer? So are we not really responsible for it? Because I, I, I don't think for me to call somebody a coffee, then I'll ask you a question to myself. What have I done to call him a coffee? Because I've failed in my own duties. So if you could kindly shed some light on it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much uh, for calling. I do appreciate your questions. Um, inshallah, we will answer them now shortly. I'll come to you first, Estella. Um, he wanted to know your journey into Islam, your experience, and what made you uh, come into this faith. My journey is really interesting and probably quite different than most. Um, I was seeking the truth from the age of 16. I was born a Catholic and I always questioned many things. And in the Catholic church, you're not supposed to question anything. You get in trouble. Um, so I was very rebellious at the same time. So as I was questioning things, I recognized that I had to look elsewhere. So I actually started going um, in the direction of different um sex of Christianity. I started practicing uh, Methodist uh, uh, background, uh, Baptist, and then I transitioned actually into practicing Hinduism and Buddhism. So my wow. journey was a really interesting one because I was just searching and searching. And granted, between the age of 16 and age of 23, I had never heard of the religion of Islam. I had no idea that it existed. So I was on this journey and when I was practicing Buddhism, um, I, I got married for the first time and I met somebody that was also Catholic like I was. And when we got married, we both decided, well, we both had similar stories. We had been on a journey where we were looking for the truth. And then we thought, well, we found each other. We were born both born Catholic, maybe we need to go back to our Catholic faith and become good Catholics, practice Catholic in a good way. So unfortunately, our marriage didn't last after um, after a few years, we were divorced. Um, we had a daughter. Uh, and then I continued my journey. I'm like, now I'm a single mom, I have to really practice my Catholic faith, you know, in, in the best way so I can raise my daughter to be you know, strong in her faith. And in doing that, I went to, to university. I went back to university because I hadn't finished my university. And that's when I found out about Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me on this journey from Catholicism back to Catholicism. And then I went and found Islam. And I was like, what is this? I was 24 years old. And I, it was like, you know, something so unique. So I was very interested, and as I studied it, for me, it was, Ya Allah, you've taken me on this journey to finally taste the sweetness of the truth. And for me, it was like a light bulb going off in my head. All of a sudden, I could see clearly in reading the Quran, in studying about Islam. For me, I studied Islam before I even met any Muslims. Um, I had met students and the university that were Muslims, and I just knew them at a surface level, not even at a deep level. And I was like, wow, I, this is a faith I haven't studied. Um, so it was just an amazing journey for me. I feel so blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me on this long journey to really actually like dig deep inside of myself and to build my resilience and and not give up and not give up even coming back to catholicism i still was you know trying to create transformation in a faith that you know was very rigid and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the faith of islam to me and it's like you know putting on my glasses and i can see clearly now 
That's amazing. Okay. A brilliant, brilliant story. Thank you as well for that question. He did have a second one, which you can briefly go through as to what was the response around you when you did actually finally enter the faith of Islam and obviously shared that with, you know, people around you. Because again, this is, you know, family issues and experiences. So what was the response that you got? So my family had always experienced me as the different, unique person in the family that was always going in different directions. So it wasn't anything new in my family. Um, I, I experienced some things uh, maybe with some peers, but at that time there, there, was, there weren't negative things out in society, in the communities, in the world against Islam. Um, mm. My mother at one point did get concerned because um, when I got married, um, she, it was when the movie Not Without My Daughter came out. If anyone knows this movie, <laughs> Not Without My Daughter came out. And in her state of ignorance and not understanding Islam, she was very worried for me. Oh no, you married one of them. <laughs> what if, what's gonna happen when you have children? So it was actually an opportunity um, because my parents were concerned because they didn't know any better. They love me, I'm their daughter. But what it did is it opened the doors for actually for them to pay attention to my husband, to pay attention to the way we were living our lives, to pay attention to his family when his family would visit. And what they were able to see is that that story didn't match with the behaviors that they saw. And they were able to see that just like in any culture, you know, and there are different different aspects, you know, to that culture, right? There are different um, aspects to even a faith. We know that there are different extremes within Islam, you know, that that people take, right? Um, so my family was always really open. The one time that I had a really challenging time was when I did start wearing the headscarf, and that was mm. 15 years after I embraced Islam. And it was with my father. My father had a really hard time. The first time he saw me wearing it, he just was really angry. He didn't understand why I chose to do that. Um, and he became very angry with me. He didn't speak to me for three years. He didn't say one word to me for three years. He would speak to me through my mother. He would say, tell her that I don't wanna see her. Tell her that, but I would still go to my parents. Now at that point, I alhamdulillah, I was, I already understood his fear. I already, you know, I didn't take it personally and I understood his level of ignorance. So I still went over to my parents' house and I showed up and I did things for them, even though he didn't speak to me. And he did, he did, um, he did change. And unfortunately it took him getting ill. He got a, a brain tumor and he had to go get surgery, alhamdulillah, he it was successful and as he came out of surgery i was the first one there waiting for him and he looked at me and all he could do was cry all he could do was cry and and he asked me to forgive him for those three years that he didn't speak to me so it was through an illness that came from a lot as a blessing as well and but i understood you know by that time i had alhamdulillah studied my faith where I knew that these challenges were coming really as opportunities and they did result in opportunities of just deeper connection and more understanding. But I have to say that I myself have not experienced a lot of negativity um, other than that with my father. That's a fascinating story and thank you so much for sharing that. It's quite deep and I understand what you're saying about not experiencing uh, so much um, sort of challenges, but that in itself is quite a lot, especially when it's from your own parents and it's not easy to go through. But obviously you did highlight that it is a responsibility amongst new Muslims as well to uh, take on that sort of like a journey of learning the truth and having that sort of uh, built you know, in between their journey so that they can continue with the challenges and still push through. And I think that's really a very strong takeaway and it does take an individual to have that kind of mindset in order to overcome this. I mean, in life, of course, we all have challenges, but it's it can be a lot more testing when you are facing your 
own family members that you grew up with that brought you up and now they're looking at you differently because you've chosen a different path and as much as you are understanding it must be painful at times and um thank you so much for sharing that it's absolutely amazing unfortunately we do have not much time but i want to come to you say it before we end the show just to, to quickly answer that caller's question with regards to uh, uh you know what would what he said about you know calling each other uh non-muslim and kafir and having a judgment yes uh before i answer that question uh, i'd like to congratulate my sister stella for having a very uh, interesting story and the journey to uh, to islam uh, very interesting but one point is very important to know that those who seek the truth in their life they are actually the chosen people by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's for sure as quran says the guidance is not bestowed to everybody otherwise mm -hmm. uh, in these days the majority of people would be the uh, guided people while we see the majority of people are not guided people so those who have um, an attitude of seeking the truth is actually those who are chosen by god by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but still guidance we always constantly in need of it you know just like an oxygen without oxygen we cannot live so without guidance we cannot survive our spiritual life so for that only i can suggest my sister stella that if you have mashallah a good uh, experience of seeking the truth you can do more research about within the the islam itself because there are many sects within the islam so the, the, the one which can be more uh, logical, uh, more reasoning, and more taking you towards your soul, to, towards your satisfaction of your uh, intellect, you should find uh, other very important uh, vision within the islam itself so if you read just start reading nahjul balagha the book from imam ali or the uh, book which is full of supplications of uh, the fourth uh, generation of the holy prophet imam zainul abidin salam, right uh, that book is full of supplications to 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 make more strong connection with with your lord the wording he has chosen and the supplication which he has given us as a great treasure. If you start doing it and reciting this all supplications, you definitely enjoy and you feel another uh, big, uh, attractive, uh, peaceful environment within the Islam itself. Uh, coming to that question, I, I know that the time is- We only have a minute left for that, Sayyid. <laughs> Yes, of course, you know, the Shia Islam, the Shia version of Islam, the Islam coming from not outsiders, from the holy household of the Holy Prophet himself. We call them Ahlul Bayt, the holy progeny of the Ahlul, uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the heirs of the Holy Prophet's uh, divine knowledge. They are the true um, successors of the Holy Prophet If we come to know the method of preaching others, conveying the divine message to the non-Muslims, you find that that method is logical as well as full of manners. Always uh, our divine leaders have taught us to, to convey the message in the best reasoning in the best behavior and the manners and you should not be harsh you should not be even um, being like instructor you are just a servant of the faith so that way is the beautiful way and the best way uh, we should all think about and we should uh, consider that way and if we work hard and be very obedient to the um, commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And after Holy Prophet, the Holy Progeny of the Holy Prophet, definitely we will have more people coming towards Islam, inshallah. Thank you so much, Sayyid. I'm sorry to uh, cut you off there. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of the show. I just want to say we need to definitely revisit this topic again because I've got so much more questions for both of you and I have no time. So we definitely need to do this again. And I really appreciate your time, Asela. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you so much, our Sayyid, our wise words. And inshallah, we have more episodes, more guests, more people calling in with their questions and comments. Again, this is a show open to us all for learning, integration, and building better relationships. Please join us on our platforms, SCI 